Hi there. My name is Aaron Landerman. I'm a professor of electrical and computer engineering at Georgia Tech, and this is the Dope for A190-5 polyphonic USB MIDI to CV slash gate interface. And this just came in from Sweetwater Sound. If you buy a module before you put it into your rack, you should always take a look at the PCB and see what you can learn. So we have a front panel board, and let's see. It looks like it mostly just has the actual front panel controls and jacks on it. I don't seem to see a lot of parts on that board itself. There's, let's see, there's a ribbon cable that goes from one side of the front panel board to the other side of the main board here with most of the actual electronics on it. So if I were to take the screws off of here, this would unfold like a book, like in the Buchla modules we looked at. I don't feel like doing that. Let's see, I've got another cable here that's connecting the front panel board to the main electronics board. The board has a little board plugged into it here, and this is some sort of pick on a stick kind of board. It's a PIC32 of some sort. It says PIC32 adapter. And I doubt this board is something that Dopefer themselves designed. This is probably a standard module you can get. Let's see, the five pins over here are probably the programming interface, just to guess. And if this is produced in larger quantities, you wouldn't see something like this. You would see all of these parts integrated in some other board. But at the small runs that Dopefer is making these, it's probably not worth bothering. Now, there is an interesting little three-pin header here that's labeled Analog In Option. And I can't find anything about that in the instructions for this. So if anyone knows more about that, let me know. Let's see. Okay, so this is polyphonic USB MIDI to CV gate interface main board. Not a big surprise there. Let's see, this is the DAC board. So here we have four op-amp chips. These are 084 quad op-amp chips, very standard JFET input op-amps. And let's see, so that gives us 16 op-amps. And originally I thought, oh, okay, well, there's 16 outputs here. So you have one op-amp per output. But I think it's actually a little bit more complicated than that for reasons I'll say in a second. And we have two little boards here containing the actual DAC chips, which are TLC5628s. And the TLC5628 is an octal 8-bit DAC. So that would give us 16 outputs. But I don't think that's exactly what's going on, because although 8 bits would be good enough for the control voltage outputs for, say, your modulation wheel or a pedal or breath controller or something like that, 8 bits is not really enough resolution for 1 volt per octave control voltage pitch data. So I suspect that the gate is probably coming directly off of some sort of logic signal because a gate really just needs to be on or off and that they're actually using two of the DAC channels probably weighted with different combinations by mixing summing resistors to actually create the pitch signal. Now, I don't really know. Oh, wait a minute. There are some other parts on this main board here. I see a transistor, a capacitor, a few resistors, but not a whole lot. Anyway, so I'm guessing that they're using two of the DACs to actually create one of the pitch signals. If you have another guess as to what's going on, leave a comment below. There are a couple of trim pots. There's a trim pot here. I'm going to guess that that's calibrating the reference voltage for the DAC, but maybe not. I'm not sure. And there's another trim pot down here. There's no reference to these trim pots in the instructions, so these are probably not meant to be user adjusted. There are some header pins for internal busing. There are MIDI in and MIDI out pins here. And over here, let's see, there's gate output, and this is and these are CV outputs. Apparently, there are some other dope for modules that are meant to be polyphonic. They'll have duplicate hardware so you can get four voices. And this lets you internally route such things. This is interesting. This little spot here is labeled for a TL431 
but it's not actually populated. So maybe at some point they thought they needed it and then later decided they didn't. Hmm. 